Good morning everyone, Reginald Scott here, and today I'm going to tell you what the best bike you can buy is. And the best bike you can buy is a titanium bike. And now we're going to go for a ride, and during this ride I'm going to explain to you why I think that the best bike you can buy is a titanium bike. Um, this is mine, as I say, uh, it's a Lightspeed T1 SL, which is the uh, lightest titanium bike in the world, uh, or the frame at least. And um, we've got uh, my new little microphone on here as well, which I'm going to have attached to my helmet. So hopefully there won't be too much wind noise, so you'll be able to hear everything I'm saying. Anyway, if you want to know why titanium bikes are the best bikes you can buy, stay tuned and I will explain everything. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! So let's get down to the facts. Well, what is what is good about a titanium bike? Why should you? If you've got your money in your pocket right now, and you're considering buying your next bike, or perhaps you'd consider selling the bike you have now just to get a titanium bike, or perhaps it's way, way off in the future. You have no desire or intention to buy a bike, but you're just interested to know. Okay? So here it is. Firstly, price. A lot of people moan on the internet for some reason that titanium bikes are expensive and I find this bizarre. You can spend like, I don't know, $5,000, right, on a carbon bike. You buy a $5,000 carbon bike, no problem. You can buy a $5,000 aluminium bike and then you can buy a $5,000 titanium bike. So which is the most expensive bike? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get why people say titanium bikes are expensive because they're not. They're the same price as any other bike. Right? If you've got the, the bare minimum, and it's not, it's not a fair comparison either, people will compare the, um, the titanium bike with like a really cheap carbon bike, you know, that's very low quality, got very basic components, made in China, maybe even a fake, who knows. And they'll compare that with a, a titanium bike, which is handmade in the West to a great degree, degree of skill and precision and passion. And they'll say, oh, the titanium bike's expensive. I'll be like, no, the titanium bike is exactly what it's worth. It's the carbon bike that's expensive because carbon isn't worth that. Let me explain. So. You know, I think it's crazy when somebody walks in a big brand bike store and drops 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 thousand dollars on a carbon bike, a big brand carbon bike. Do you know how much those frames retail for? You know, they, we're talking like the high end sort of frames on the market, the, the specialized, the Trex, you know, the big, the big brand frames. They're retailing for like six or seven thousand dollars. The best bikes, right? Six or seven thousand dollars, maybe more. This titanium bike I'm riding right now, it's the best, well, it, in my opinion, it's the best racing titanium bike in the world. It's the lightest titanium bike in the world. It's super stiff, it's super agile. The ride quality is immeasurable, like in comparison with what I've ridden before. And uh, it costs the same as one of those high-end carbon bikes, about $6,000 for the frame, that is. Now you can obviously buy cheaper frames, it depends what level of bike you're looking for, right? You can buy cheaper bikes, you can buy cheaper titanium bikes, just like you can buy cheaper carbon bikes, right? So it depends what you're looking for. But when you compare the two, a $6,000 carbon bike versus a $6,000 titanium bike, there's some major differences, okay? And it's why I believe that titanium is actually cheaper than the alternatives. A titanium bike is cheaper than a carbon bike for the same price. Why do I say that? I'm saying that because value for money. You get value for money with 
the tie bite that you don't get from a carbon bite. And the first thing is, titanium, if you don't know this already, they call it a bike for life. The reason why titanium is considered a bike for life is the metal has a very high resistance to fatigue or cyclical fatigue. So that means when you stress the frame, when you stress the material, it doesn't have micro fractures in it. It doesn't, it doesn't get micro fractures that you get on aluminium bikes, for example. So they say you should change your aluminium frame every five years. Most people don't, but that's what they say. You know, just like I read recently in a Canyon manual for a carbon bike that they advise you change your carbon components every three years, irrelevant to whether you crash them or not. Because they just know that carbon and aluminium don't last. All right? So, or at least they don't, they're not as safe as they were after three or four or five years. So they, by, by playing it safe, they just say change every three years. It's the inbuilt obsolescence that the manufacturers love about carbon. But anyway, back to that. So, number one, your titanium frame is, is a, has a high resistance to cyclical stress, which means you can ride it on bumpy roads and over potholes and things as much as you want for many, many years. And in theory, it should be fine. Um, obviously, there are always exceptions. Obviously, it depends on the quality of the bike. If you go buy a Chinese titanium bike, you know, that's a lot cheaper, then maybe it won't. Or it just won't be a good bike. Or if you, um, you know, you mistreat the bike, or, or there's just a, an issue with the build quality. The good thing about titanium bikes from Lightspeed is that they come with a lifetime warranty. So in theory, if anything is wrong with the bike as a result of manufacturing defects, they should repair or replace. So that's a good thing. Lifetime warranty. There's another advantage for titanium bikes. A, a lot of manufacturers will offer a lifetime warranty. Some of the higher end ones actually don't. Some of the hand-built custom bikes offer like 15 years or seven years I've, I've seen. But Lightspeed offer life. They don't put a date on it, which is nice. Um, so the other thing is that unlike, so that's not like carbon fiber. Carbon fiber does get stressed and it does weaken over time. Although it's very, very strong as a material, it does have vulnerabilities. It doesn't like impact of any kind. You can't impact carbon fiber safely. You can't drop it or drop something on it and then just expect it to be fine. You have to get it checked usually with um, an ultrasound scanner by an expert who can then make a repair if necessary. But the problem is a lot of people are riding around on damaged carbon bikes and they don't even know it because that damage is not skin deep, it's under the skin. Yeah? So it's hard for people to know whether their bikes are damaged or not. That's another advantage of titanium. If it's damaged, you can tell. You can, you can physically see the damage. And uh, more often than not, it's just polish as well. The titanium is really easy to polish. So, if you do have cosmetic damage, it's not a big issue. Wow, it's really windy today. I am not moving fast at all. Probably gonna be late. Oh well. Um, so that's, that's one thing. And then another thing is that it's also highly resistant to uh, oxidization. So titanium doesn't oxidize in the same way as aluminium or steel. And it doesn't react with other metals like carbon fiber does. So obviously steel rusts, everybody knows that. And it can be managed, but titanium doesn't. And then aluminium oxidizes and it starts to uh, break down but titanium doesn't. You can throw a titanium bike in the sea, leave it there for a decade, and come back later and it'll still be fine. Because it just doesn't rust. So, that's one thing. Carbon fiber, of course. It, uh, it's very reactive with other metals. It forms like a, a, a battery between other metals and itself. Uh, especially when it's exposed to like salt water and water 
moisture which everybody's got especially in abundance here in Brunei where this is a very highly humid country with high humidity carbon fiber does not like humidity and uh, what results is that you get bonding between metal parts like your seat post for example can become bonded to your frame or your headset or your uh, your stem can get stuck on the frame or on the forks because of that that carbon fiber issue especially if you don't maintain the bike enough and then the other one is all the rivets in the bike because they use a lot of rivets in carbon bikes to hold on derailleur hangers and things like that and they get eaten away over time I've seen it happen many times in my shop people come in and the carbon fiber is basically eaten away at the aluminium rivets and all of a sudden the derailleur drops off you don't get that with a tie bike okay so there's another advantage what else um, UV light let's just quickly talk about UV light so if you didn't know when you buy a carbon bike don't leave it out in direct sunlight don't leave it in your car don't hang it over the back of your exhaust pipe when you're driving you know directly in the way of your exhaust pipe because carbon fiber will warp uh, if you get it too hot and also UV light destroys it UV light breaks down the the, uh, the glue that they use to stick it together because that's all carbon fiber is it's just sheets of material like your t-shirt that you're wearing now or whatever impregnated with, with resin with glue so that resin makes it rigid makes it strong but if the resin starts to break down then the carbon becomes softer so although people say carbon bikes are very stiff and there's some argument as to which is stiffer but although people say carbon is stiff if you buy a carbon bike today that's like stiffness 10 out of 10 in a few years it may not be it might be 9 or 8 out of 10 because it just breaks down over time so it's a short term investment difference between investing thousand dollars in gold and a thousand dollars in fresh bananas right if you invest a thousand dollars in bananas you can pretty much guarantee that in a few years time your money will be gone because those bananas will rot down but if you invest in gold or uh, in this case the exotic metal titanium your investment is safer because this doesn't break down over time yeah that's uh, to illustrate the value difference between titanium and carbon fiber you just have to take both frames to a scrap merchant the scrap dealer will give you money for a tie bike because the metal is worth something it has value he won't give you anything for carbon and that's because number one the material itself has no value as such the only value it has in the shape of the frame so if you break the frame then it's worthless whereas if you break a titanium frame it still has some value to a scrap man and uh, the other thing about bad thing about carbon fiber is it can't be recycled it's more harmful to the environment because at least with titanium it's non-reactive it's non-toxic it's non-harmful I can lick this titanium frame all day long if I wanted to I wouldn't but <laughs> I could and it's not going to do me any harm at all but carbon fiber on the other hand it's uh, it can't be recycled it can't be turned into anything else so once you've built that carbon fiber frame that's it that's the only use that bike's ever going to have whereas this bike if i if i broke it then i gave it to a scrap man he could you know melt it down and make something out of it which is great the other thing of course is uh is production wow it's really windy here i'm doing very low speed hopefully you can still hear me the wind is quite intense i'm about to go uphill as well quite a steep hill so i'm not looking forward to that <laughs> usually i like hills but i'm in a bit of a rush today not a rush but 
could do with being on time. So it costs 40% more CO2 emissions to produce a carbon bike than it does steel or titanium or aluminium for that matter. So if you, if you care about the environment, if you believe in global warming, if you believe that CO2 is a bad thing to release into the atmosphere, then you better buy a metal bike because carbon bikes cost more CO2 to produce, they can't be recycled and because they don't last forever or they don't last very long and they're not resilient to being crashed then you know most people I'm seeing in my shop change their bikes every two to three years they really do they get bored of their carbon bikes and they end up getting rid or they break it and then they end up buying a new one it's pretty sad really Whereas me, I, I hope, with any luck, I'll be uh, hanging on to this bike for the foreseeable future. I'm hoping it's going to outlast me. <laughs> or at least last long enough that my own son or daughter will be able to ride it one day. And then I can have an excuse to uh, buy myself a new bike. <laughs> So there you go. So that's some major advantages. Just the value for money side of it. Like it costs on average about $300 to make a carbon bike. And we're talking the high end bikes here. We're not talking the fake Chinese ones. That's another thing. You'll never see a fake light speed. Never see a fake titanium bike. Because they're just too hard to make. The materials cost too much. The skills to weld them are too high. The machining to make them is too difficult. And um, yeah, there's not much profit in it. But you'll see plenty of fake Minarellos, fake S-Works, fake whatever, Treks. I've had them in my shop. I've had numerous S-Work bikes. They're a very popular bike to fake. Some of them are so bad you can squeeze the top tube with your bare hands. It's, it's ridiculous how bad they are. Absolute death traps, but people will buy them. I don't know why, because they're cheap. But I, I, I couldn't do that to myself. I'd rather spend $1,000 on a high quality aluminium bike than spend $1,000 buying a black market Chinese copy, but that's just me. Some people don't think like me. I've come to realize. Uh, you know, they should really, if they love the company so much that they want one of their bikes, they should support them and buy a cheaper version. That would be what I would do, but there you go. I had this discussion with somebody before. Anyway, I digress. So yeah, so carbon bikes are so easy and cheap to make that that's why they get faked so readily. Whereas titanium is not easy to make. It takes skill, it takes dedication, it takes years of expertise. That's why carbon is so, so abundant. That's why the manufacturers love it so much because they can make so much profit out of the frame that you bought from that mainstream bike brand made of carbon cost $300 to make. The markup on them is insane, insane. When you consider they're mass produced in China and Taiwan on huge production lines, manned by very low wage, unskilled workers who can be taught how to, you know, lay the carbon in a mold or cut the carbon and apply glue and then put it in an oven. They can be taught to do their jobs very easily. Whereas if you're a hand welder, it takes years, years of experience to be able to be good enough to get a good weld on a Thai bike. It's really hard. This is the hill, so do excuse my breathing. So, you know, you're really getting a value for money difference between the two frames. You're really getting ripped off when you buy the carbon so to condense it just in case you've not worked it out it, it costs less to make costs less skill to make takes less precision to make a lot of them are full of faults I watch a guy who cuts up carbon frames and shows you the insides and nearly all of them have mistakes in them 
because they're very hard to control. The workers are hard to control and the production's hard to control. <coughs> A lot can go wrong. And uh, the precision you get with the frames is less. And they, less, they last less long. And they're less resilient. So really, when you look at a $7,000 titanium bike frame and a $7,000 carbon bike frame, there's no competition. And that goes all the way down to the cheapest frame. You know, titanium starts around $2,000 for a frame. Brunei dollars, that is. And... Uh, If you compare it with any other frame at that price, it's better. You get more value for money. So there you go. I mean, just one more case in point about production and production quality. Look at the bottom bracket. And I know this because I, like I say, I work in a bike shop. I deal with this all the time. You get customers with creaky bottom brackets. You don't get that problem with a tie bike. These light speeds have got PF30s on them. I don't get any trouble. I don't get any trouble with these bikes. No creaking, no noise, nothing. Titanium bikes are quiet. They don't complain, they don't creak. Not like when I had a carbon bike. The things make so much noise. They're so noisy. When you're riding on your own on a nice quiet country lane, the whole thing is just creaking and groaning away. It's horrible. But the reason for that is because of the inaccuracy of the production of the bottom bracket shell. So a titanium bottom bracket shell in PF30 is just a titanium tube that uh, obviously is quite thick. Sometimes they they butt it and they ream it out, uh, they cut it so that it's not, it's light and strong. But it's uh, it's very you know it's super stiff. You can't bend a titanium tube of that thickness that goes into making the bottom bracket shell. And the precision is 100% almost, you know, it's, it's machined with a lathe, usually. Um, thick tube, and they, they machine it out with a lathe. So, the, the shape of the bottom bracket shell is perfect, and the dimension is perfect. So when you put your bottom bracket in it, you don't have to worry because uh, you know it's going to fit. Whereas the carbon bite ones, especially the ones made of carbon fibre, are actually usually warped. They're not 100% machined because they're moulded. They're not machined, they're moulded. So they're just not accurate. And so when you put your BB in there, it creaks and it squeaks. That's the first thing it does. Because when you put pressure on it, it's an uneven force. The force is distributed unevenly around the edges of the cups of the BB. You don't get that problem with the tie bite. And then the second thing that happens is your bearings wear out faster. Because a lot of these carbon bike bottom brackets, they're misaligned. Because again, they're molded, they're not machined, so they're completely misaligned. So people go and waste their money on very expensive bearings like ceramic, hybrid ceramic should I say, which are also a marketing scam by the way. And then they put them in their bike and they're worn out within four months. Because the spindle, when it turns, it's, it's actually moving the bearings in their position because they're not sitting properly in the frame. So it's a complete waste of money and complete waste of time. And then to solve this problem, manufacturers started bonding in aluminium bottom brackets, shells, inside the, to, uh, inside the carbon bikes, not titanium bikes, inside the carbon bikes. And uh, you know, that's great because they can get better precision from the, the shell itself, if that shell fits nicely into the frame, which sometimes, again, they don't. But then the next problem is, well, two problems. Aluminium is soft, so they become damaged, especially if they're using the system that some bike manufacturers use, which is like the BB30 system. You're pressing steel bearings into an aluminium shell Eventually those steel bearings wear away the aluminium after servicing or replacement 
and then you end up with another creaky bottom bracket. So you're back to square one. And the other disadvantage is, obviously, as I said before, aluminium reacts with carbon fibre, which results in the uh, the aluminium carbon, uh, the aluminium shell coming unbonded, unstuck from the frame, and that can happen. So it's just a nightmare. Why would you do it to yourself? So I never get any BB issues with my BB. I can because it's a PF30. It's really versatile, so I can run anything I want. Right now I'm running 24mm Shimano, but I could run Campy, I could run SRAM, I could run FSA, anything I want, and I wouldn't get any trouble. And the variety of BBs that I can use is huge because of this system. So, and as I say, I don't have to worry about noise or misalignment because it's machined. It's precision. You're getting a precision engineered piece of material. Now you don't get that with carbon fibre bikes. They are mass produced, moulded, and they are not precision by any stretch of the imagination. So following that, let's talk about weight. Because a lot of people complain that Thai bikes are heavy. Well, let's give a short synopsis on that. That's utter nonsense. Yes. The titanium bike will be lighter than aluminium in general. So a really, really light aluminium bike, the titanium bike will be just slightly lighter. And on average, the titanium frame might be, like towards the top end, might be slightly heavier than the highest end carbon frame. So titanium bikes can be light, basically. To illustrate my point, I had a customer come in a while back and he had a genuine specialized S-Works tarmac, a new one, rim brake version, not a uh, disc brake, so the lighter version. He had carbon wheels, carbon bars, carbon seat post, um, aluminium stem, carbon bottle cages, what else? Yeah, like mostly carbon components on the bike. And his bike weighs in at uh, 7.5, 7.5 kg. My bike is a large, so two sizes bigger than his, because it goes small, medium, large, yeah? So my frame is two sizes bigger, made of titanium, my seat post is titanium, my handlebars, stem and wheels are all made of aluminium, because that's what I rock, I rock aluminium components. I, there's hardly any carbon on my bike at all, actually, apart from the fork, which is also made of carbon. And if I find a nice tie fork that matches my bike, I probably will buy one. But anyway, right now I'm running a carbon fork. So that's probably the main thing on my bike that's made of carbon. Everything else is made of metal. Oh yeah, his group set as well was Dura Ace. My group set is Ultegra. Right? So from that, who do you think has got the lighter bike? Well, obviously he has. His is uh, 7.5. But mine is, when I race it, when it's at race weight, which is when I put my racing tyres on it and I put my carbon bottle gauges on it because right now I'm using plastic that's what I do before I race <laughs> my bike race weight is 7.58 so my bike is 80 grams heavier than his but it's two sizes bigger and made of metal and has a lower end group set you know, in comparison, it's crazy. So if I had his group set, my bike would be lighter than his S-Works Tarmac. And our bikes are the same price. Right? So, lightness. People say titanium is heavy, it's not true. You can make a very light bike with a titanium bike. It all depends on what components you buy and which bike you buy. If you go super high end like this one, this is the highest end titanium bike out there, I would imagine. You know, for, for weight and stiffness. Then your bike will be nice and light, guaranteed. So, next thing is, uh, oh yeah, to make a comparison again, sorry. So this year, Lightspeed brought out an aero bike called the Ultimate. And uh, that's uh, less expensive than this frame. It's around um, 
four and a half, five thousand dollars, something there. I can't quite remember, but uh, that's Brunei dollars. So it's our aero offering, if you like. And to compare that with another aero bike on the market for similar money, well, actually, the one, this one is more expensive, would be the Trek Madone. Because the Trek Madone is made of carbon, it's quite heavy duty carbon. And uh, it's also got that spring system in it to make the bike more comfortable to dislocate the seat tube from the rest of the frame so that you get a slightly better ride quality because ride quality on carbon bikes is not that great because of all that extra gubbings it makes the bike really heavy so if you were to compare the two you know the heaviest bike that we sell in our shop uh, right now is the, uh, the T6 which is like the lowest end bike that we sell in titanium and that weighs in about eight and a half kg that's the heaviest bike we sell in 105 I saw figures for the Trek Madone in Dura Ace I think it was Dura Ace it might have been Ultegra but either way with carbon wheels and carbon frame and everything it's like a ten thousand dollar bike crazy crazy heavy now I know weight isn't everything but why would you spend that kind of money on a bike so heavy and the thing is, it's, it's so heavy because they're having to adapt carbon fibre to, uh, to be nice, to be a nice ride quality. So yeah, weight is not an issue with titanium, and that, now that brings me on to ride quality. Two best bikes you can buy for ride quality are steel and titanium, hands down. Anybody who's got a steel bike, anybody who's got a titanium bike will agree with me on that one. The ride quality for steel and titanium is unsurpassed. Carbon bikes just can't hold a candle to it, sorry. All the most uncomfortable bikes I've ever ridden have been carbon bikes. Just, just the way it is. The way that the, the material reacts, and also the ride quality, the feel of the bikes. They, people complain that carbon bikes feel kind of dead. They're not lively, they're not interesting, they're not fun to ride. Whereas aluminium, steel and titanium bikes, they have a, I don't know, they have a personality, they have a liveliness to them. You just don't get from carbon. And uh, the evidence to me that carbon bikes are uncomfortable is quite clear. So when we were all riding steel bikes a long, long time ago, have you noticed how everybody's tire size was like in the low 20s? You know, like 20, 21, 22. And maybe like when I started riding uh, back in the 90s, it was about 23, 23s was the thing. And then carbon really started to take hold um, and everybody started riding carbon bikes and then all of a sudden they're encouraging us to switch to 25 and then after that they start to encourage us to switch to 28. Really big tyres, really big tyres. The propagandists at uh, GCN telling us to switch to bigger fatter tyres and the reason for that is steel bikes are comfortable. You don't need a 28mm tyre. You're quite happy on a 22. I was chatting to a guy who collects classic steel frames the other day. And he rides around on really thin tyres and he hasn't got any trouble at all. He's an older guy. You know, you would think that comfort would be an issue for him. But he's riding a steel bike, so it doesn't matter. And the same thing with titanium. It's got one of the best qualities for absorbing vibration. This bike I'm riding now is so much smoother than any carbon bike I've ever ridden. And if you buy one of the endurance versions of these titanium bikes, if you go for something that's more towards um, long distance riding in, in comfort, like a Grand Fondo bike, like the T5 or the T6, then they're even more comfortable. They're super comfortable. Um, this one I'm riding right now is a racing bike, so it's, it's not as comfortable, but it's still more comfortable than any t carbon bike. Yeah, so the reason why they're pushing you to get fatter tyres is not because they're faster, that's a fallacy. If you go look at the rolling resistance data from uh, tyres, you'll find that the Continental, the, the tyres listed as a 23mm, right? On the Continental chart, on the chart, sorry, is much faster uh, for rolling resistance than the 25mm 
And once you get past 25, or once you get into the realm of 25, you start to lose aerodynamics because the, the sides of the tyre balloon out from the rim. So if you're running aero rims and you're running 25 mil tyres, they've had to make the rims fatter to accommodate the tyres to make them more aero. And if you don't, I mean even that, a lot of the 25 mil tyres still stick out from the sides and you lose a lot of the aerodynamic benefit of the wheel because of the fatter tyres. Stick a 28 on there and you've had it. You know, you might as well be running box section wheels. So I ride this bike with 25s when I'm training and when I race I put 23s on. And the 23s make a massive difference. I'm, I feel so much faster with my 23s on than I do with these 25s, it's unbelievable. So yeah, the reason why they encourage you to get fatter tyres is not anything to do with the fatter tyres are faster because they're not. It's because carbon bikes are uncomfortable and they want you to keep buying carbon bikes. Also, it gives them another good excuse for you to change your bike, right? Because uh, if you've already got an old carbon bike that can't take a 25mm tyre, then it's like, oh, I feel bad now. I have to change my bike. So that's one thing. It's got nothing to do with speed. It's got to do with comfort. And uh, another thing is, back to the Trek bikes, they've got all these fancy spongy bike frames and they with these springs in and it's designed to uh, make the bikes more comfortable because they are so unforgiving and so unpleasant to ride long distance I can ride this bike and as I say it's a racing bike it's not designed to be super comfortable but I can ride this 100 kilometers no problem I get no pain no fatigue my previous carbon bike if I rode that 30 kilometers, I would be aching all over because of the vibration. And I've ridden a lot of customer bikes, some of them very expensive, and they're all the same, pretty much. Really unpleasant ride quality. They don't handle well either because they're formed for aerodynamics, supposed aerodynamics, rather than ride quality. Ride quality comes last on the list. The, the looks of the bike, the aerodynamics of the bike comes first. And then to illustrate my point again, I had a customer who bought a Lightspeed T6, which is our, or was last year's uh, most comfortable Lightspeed designed for long distance riding, endurance riding. And uh, she already had um, uh, specialized Roubaix. Now the Roubaix comes with 28 mil tires and uh, what else? Like like a spongy sort of material in the seat post and I think there's some in the chain stays as well like some like gel in the chain stays and it's got 28 mil, like I say 28 mil tires and oh it's got a headset that's on like a spring system so the handlebars bounce up and down as you go over bumps in the road to try and take out some of the vibration anyway she bought the light speed t6 and she came back and she told me that the t6 was as comfortable to ride as the roubaix now the t6 doesn't have any technology in it other than the frame it doesn't have any you know gel or any weird headset or anything. I'll just pull over here for a second, have a little chat. Oh, sorry, or in the, any springs, because it doesn't need it, because it's a, a comfortable frame. And she runs it with 25 mil tires, but you could run it with 23s and it would be no problem. So one bike has got 28 mil tires, the other one got 25s. One bike's got all these springs and gel in the frame to make it comfortable. The other one just has a titanium frame. And she said both bikes are the same the same ride quality, like like same comfort, not ride quality, but comfort. Um, and what's really interesting is that they're both bikes are about the same price. In fact, I imagine that the T6 is probably a bit cheaper than the, the Specialized. And um, <laughs> it's lighter. The T6 is lighter because the, the Specialized bike is, is like quite solid carbon fiber. And because it has all these extra springs and gels, in the frame and because it's running such fat tires you're adding weight that's another thing about tires as well if you run thinner tires on a bike you'll get faster acceleration because you've got less weight on the wheel 
weight on the wheel matters more than weight on the frame because it's rotational weight you have to spin it up in order to accelerate so if you've got lighter wheels or lighter tires on your wheels which is right on the the edge of the wheel which is the most important place to reduce weight you will in theory accelerate faster and you'll also go uphill faster because you'll be carrying less weight so yeah thinner tires are actually better uh, in that respect um, so isn't that amazing she could have just bought the t6 but instead she got both and now she knows which is great and it was it was great information for me as well so that kind of illustrates my point that number one titanium bikes even without any fancy bells or whistles on are much nicer to ride the other thing of course is that um you know you don't need to carry that extra weight and that extra technology so the trek madone for example is super heavy because it's uncomfortable it's uncomfortable because it's carbon and to reduce the uh, uncomfortableness of the frame they've had to incorporate all these crazy technologies and, and springs and whistles and whatever uh, springs and uh, plunger systems and fatter tires in order to make the bike rideable okay and one thing I've learned is that if a bike isn't rideable if it's not comfortable for you and you don't like the feel of the bike you won't go fast doesn't doesn't matter how aero the bike's supposed to be you won't go fast and I've got an illustration of this I had a customer last year I think it was he used to ride a giant propel which is an aero bike um, and I'm going to talk in another video about aero bikes because a lot of it is marketing nonsense but basically at a giant propel it's considered an aero bike it's considered a fast bike right he had aero wheels on it and he switched to a light speed t2 which was last year's uh, second from the top bike in our range really nice bike I've had one and it's it's absolutely gorgeous uh, I've ridden one and it, it's just one of my favorite bikes of all time and he um, he switched to this t2 frame the giant propel frame and the t2 were identical in weight okay he used all the same components same wheels everything right the only difference is the bottom bracket um, so we switched all these components over from the giant to the t2 the giant is an aero bike the t2 isn't the t2 is just a standard normal front bike frame right it's got nice tube shaping but it's not specifically aero um all the same components same wheels same group set everything he went out on that and he started smashing all his strava times on the t2 and when he came back and gave his review which is on my facebook page amazing review by the way one of the best reviews i've ever had he listed all the aspects of the giant versus all the aspects of the light speed everything from looks handling ride comfort performance um you know everything about the bike and everything he said was better everything he said was better with the, the light speed and he said the reason why he felt he was going faster was because he was more comfortable so he was less fatigued and he was more confident on the bike he said the bike handled better than the giant the giant felt unstable and difficult in the corners he said i can now corner faster than i could before I, I'm more confident to get out the saddle and accelerate because he was a new rider and he wasn't he didn't feel confident to accelerate the bike much like get out the saddle and sprint now he does and his climbing improved so he was saving time on the corners he was sprinting more he was accelerating better and he was climbing faster which meant that all his Strava times were getting smashed and people here they couldn't understand it I actually got a phone call in the middle of the night from some guy who saw my advert on Facebook that the fact that this customer had switched from a giant propel carbon bike to a titanium bike that wasn't uh, an aero bike and he rang me up not to ask to buy one of my bikes he wanted to know why on earth anybody would switch from a carbon bike that's an aero bike to a side bike and he actually got my wife on the phone because I was in the shower at the time and um, she spoke to him and he was like but how but you know why would anybody like switch because here they don't understand titanium they don't understand anything other than mainstream carbon bikes they, they just they don't have it in their it's not been in the psyche of the, the country for long enough or it hasn't been in the population long enough for them to kind of get to grips with it and uh, you know nobody here rides steel bikes hardly and, and nobody here rides metal if they can get away with it everybody wants to ride carbon and uh, yeah he, he literally couldn't understand he just kept saying the same thing over and over again but why why would anybody do that and my wife just kept saying to him read the guy's review read the guy's review just read the guy's review 
And he might have been one of the um, the giant fanboys we have here, because each bike shop has got their own fanboys. Some of them are like hardcore giant or hardcore Scott or hardcore specialized, and they don't believe any bike can be good unless it's a specialized a giant, a Trek or whatever, right? So he might have just been a fanboy who couldn't understand why anyone would change their beloved giant for a light speed. But basically, that customer really benefited from doing it, and now he's faster as a result. So if a bike isn't comfortable, if you're not happy on a bike, if it doesn't feel good, it doesn't matter how much percentage aerodynamics you're gaining from the bike, you won't go fast. And actually, the majority of aerodynamics is from your body, not from the bike anyway. So yeah, I'll talk about that in another video. So basically, to kind of sum up quickly if I can, because really this is a huge subject, but the reasons you want to buy a tie bike over any other kind of bike is number one value for money it's, it's better built it's built by passionate people by people that care with real expertise um, it's going to last longer it's going to be more resilient it's going to be more versatile you can ride it to work you know like i do you can race on it you can put panniers on it you can take it long distance riding once you've got a titanium frame because it's so resilient you can take it gravel riding like if you want to go gravel riding on your tie bike, it's no trouble at all. You don't have to worry about stone chips or uh, chain strikes or anything like that, right? It just doesn't matter um, because the frame will just shrug all that off. I know somebody who had a, a carbon frame cracked by a stone thrown up by a car. And it actually cracked his down tube on his bike because the stone hit the, the carbon frame with that much force. It, it cracked a hole almost clean through the frame. And he had only had the bike a few months. He should have bought a titanium bike because he's a friend of mine. <laughs> I offered him a titanium bike for the same price. And um, as a result of buying the carbon bike, you know, it cracked. So there you go. Um, so yeah, so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff with the tie bike. Much more resilient, long lasting, easy to clean, easy to maintain. And you get way more value for money from the bike. Because not only is it better, but it also, you know, it, it's built with, um, it costs more to make. It has better value. And it's more environmentally friendly as well. So it costs less carbon and it can be recycled. So the advantages on cost effectiveness are huge. Second thing is it's going to be more comfortable. You're going to enjoy your ride more. You're going to be less fatigued. And I really believe in fatigue being a major factor in your performance in a race. You can have, like I say, the stiffest, lightest, most aero carbon bike. But if you feel like crap after doing 40 kilometers in a 120 kilometer bike race, you are not going to win because you'll start to get slower and slower and slower fatigue and, and your your comfort on the bike plays such a huge role in your performance if you don't feel comfortable on the bike you won't perform well right now i'm sitting on the top tube of my bike by the way which is something that carbon bike manufacturers tell you not to do they tell you not to clamp your top tube and they tell you not to sit on it because it's so thin and you can break it i'm sitting on my top tube right now and i have no worry about it whatsoever I could stand on my titanium top tube and it wouldn't make a difference. We've got some hollow titanium tubes in the shop and there's no way you can break them. You, you can stand on, them you stand on them, you can try and crush them, you can't break them. If you get like a top tube off a carbon bike that's not sealed on both ends, because carbon gains its structure from its shape, from its total monocoque design, right? If you, if you crush that carbon tube, it will just, it will just crush. Um, there's loads of people online on forums that have actually broken their bikes as a result of sitting on the top tube or clamping the top tube, if you go look it up. So there's another thing. But yeah, so, you know, better value for money, more comfort. Comfort is key. If you're comfortable on the bike, you're gonna be confident on the bike. If you're confident on the bike, you will perform well. I know there are days when I feel comfortable and happy on the bike, I perform well. I perform better than anybody else on any aero bike it, or any carbon bike, it doesn't matter. Um, it's all, a lot of riding is, is psychological in any, any way, right? It's psychology. It's endurance. If you've got that endurance, you will win. Um, so that's another thing. Um, so better value for money, more resilient, stronger, more versatile, and uh, more comfortable, quieter, easier to maintain. Like the 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 poly, it's easy to polish the frames. The the frames don't damage easily, but also like uh, low maintenance costs because they don't galvanically corrode like carbon. They don't rust like steel. They don't um, oxidize like aluminium. So the frame itself is really easy to maintain. Um, and also you don't get any bottom bracket issues with them because the bottom brackets are so precise. So you don't have to worry about any of those things. Really low maintenance costs, really, really trouble free. 
bikes to run and use every day. And you want a bike you can use every day, right? You don't want to spend $10,000 on a bike or even $2,000 on a bike or whatever and not be able to use it. Yeah, that, that kind of defeats the point of having that bike. Um, so, quiet. You know, they, they don't complain, they don't creak, they don't make noise. Um, so, really, looking at it that way, the advantages are huge. I could continue talking about this. I'm sure there'll be things that I've, I've missed out. Um, just a quick word, actually, on technology. So, people think that because <coughs> titanium is, is not now used in the Pro Tour, that it's dated. Well, the reason why pro athletes, people ask me this question all the time, if titanium is so good, why don't the pros use it? The reason the pros don't use it is because um, it's marketing. Yeah, they can mass produce carbon frames and change them slightly every year and sell more and more carbon frames, which have got inbuilt obsolescence in them, which, you know, are going to break down on you more easily and more able to break in a crash. It's why so many crit racers still ride aluminium bikes. They don't ride carbon. A lot of them, they ride aluminium because of the the fact that they're going to crash during races and they want a bike that can handle the crashes and be more resilient. Oh, I've already been bitten by a mosquito. Never mind. Um, so that's one, one aspect of it is that there's no profit in selling titanium bikes to a mass market because they're so hard to produce and they're hard to replace. Like if a load of riders in the Pro Tour you know, crash their titanium bikes and damage them, then it's going to take a lot longer to get them more titanium bikes. Whereas, you know, when you're producing the carbon frames for like 300 bucks and you can just pump them out of factories thousands at a time, it's so much cheaper, more cost effective to be marketing those products to customers. It's all about profit. Pro Tour Cycling is one big advert. It's an advert. You've got to remember that. And everything they use in the Pro Tour is advertised towards you to, to sell, to make money. Um, and I'll, I'll happily tell you that, and I'll happily tell you that's a big part of cycling marketing. Um, you know, <laughs> back when I was first riding, specialized bikes weren't considered to be cool. Now, because of the marketing of uh, Peter Sagan, the great rider, you know, great personality, they're considered to be cool. Everybody wants to ride one, right? So it's marketing. Um, so titanium bikes are not in the Pro Tour because they're not good. They're not in the Pro Tour because it doesn't make financial sense for the retailers and for the big manufacturers to make titanium bikes. They make carbon. Carbon is easy to make and it's cheap to make and you can sell it for ridiculous overinflated prices. And it doesn't last very long, so it encourages people to buy new bikes. Whereas titanium is a bike for life. Why would you sell bikes for life to the mass market? Then nobody would buy any more bikes and sales would go down. Yeah, it's consumerism, it's rampant consumerism. That's all it is. Um, you don't get rich by selling titanium bikes. You just don't. Uh, that's why Lightspeed is a small company. That's why most titanium bike manufacturers are a small company. Uh, and that carbon manufacturers are a big company because it's highly profitable. So there you go. Low cost, high profits. Um, but looking at the technology side of it, these bikes that I have, these Lightspeed bikes, they are not untechnologically advanced. They're actually very advanced. The technology in these the new titanium bikes is very advanced. Yeah, the, the processes to make the frames and shape the frames to give those great qualities that you look for in a bike, the handling and the ride quality um, and the lightness have really come on leaps and bounds. Um, and they're, they're super stiff. You know, if you want a race bike, these are great race bikes. Uh, I race this one numerous occasions and it's been wonderful. It's been a wonderful bike to race and I wouldn't have anything else. Um, but talking about like the materials, <coughs> to give you an example, the SR-71, which was the most advanced aircraft ever built, it's an American uh, Cold War spy plane, and it's the fastest aircraft ever built, it's the highest flying aircraft ever built, it was never shot down by enemy missiles, because they built like, I don't know how many of them, like 60 or so of these aircraft, and they never lost one to Russian missile fire or enemy missile fire, because the, this aircraft could literally outrun missiles. The cool thing about the aircraft as well is it actually becomes more fuel efficient the faster it flies, which is crazy. But um, yeah, it can do like Mach 4, or maybe even more than that. The, the, the top speed of the aircraft is actually still a secret. But it's the most advanced aircraft any, uh, all, in all time, and it's probably the most beautiful man-made machine 
ever made, in my opinion. It's just gorgeous. And it's 92% made of titanium. So that is like the most technologically advanced aircraft ever built, and it's made of titanium, not carbon fiber. And yeah, they're using a lot of carbon fiber in aircraft now, but aircraft are actually getting slower because they're starting to use drones. And drones, you want to be able to mass produce, and they want to be cheap. So you don't want to make them out of titanium because titanium is expensive. Right, so if you look at all the most advanced military hardware on the, in the planet, you look at all the most advanced technology on the planet, actually titanium plays a huge role. Um, if you look at a lot of the components on bikes, which are expensive, a lot of the high-end bikes, you know, what are they using? They're using like titanium fixings and titanium screws. Like the Dura Ace uses titanium on the cassette and it uses titanium in the, um, the shifters so yeah, to lighten everything and strengthen everything. So titanium is a wonderful material a very advanced material and still used predominantly in, in advanced technology and uh, you know it is it is still a pinnacle material so don't let people tell you just because you're riding a tie bike you're somehow outdated or, or it's not technologically advanced because it really is it's just a different kind of technology oh yeah like like metal is considered to be old-fashioned but and, and not you know like old hat and that laminates and um, plastics and things are considered to be more advanced uh, composite materials are considered to be more advanced, but if you look at the, um, the SpaceX project by um, Elon Musk, that eccentric billionaire guy, you know, basically the real Tony Stark, um, he originally intended to build his fuel tanks and his, his, um, his space rocket out of carbon fiber, and they built this very advanced robot that was going to filament weld these massive carbon fiber structures. Anyway, they built them at great expense, and they failed. They, all the pressure testing on these tanks and everything, they all failed and just collapsed. So what they're using now to build this space rocket is stainless steel, which is incredible that they, they're using stainless steel uh, because people consider that metal is not advanced, but they found that stainless steel is giving them the properties that they require for this incredible project of a, a, re a reusable space rocket. Um, and it's much better than the qualities that they're getting from the, the composites. I had a customer uh, last year, he's been in Brunei for a few years. Uh, he was originally from South America, but he, he lived in America. So, and he bought himself a titanium bike. It wasn't a light speed, but he, he bought himself another brand of titanium bike. And he br came to uh, Brunei and he raced in Brunei on this titanium bike. And he did very well for his age category. I think he was a veteran. Um, he came fourth, I think, in one race. He did really, really well. And he would train and race and ride for fun and do everything on this titanium bike. And I remember when he came to my shop and worked out that I was selling light speeds and, and titanium bikes, he was really excited and he was saying about how great titanium bikes are. And he would tell my customers who were in the shop, you know, he'd be like, get a titanium bike, do it, just do it. You know, it's, it's fantastic. He said, you won't regret it. Um, buy the best one you, you can, he used to say. You know, the most expensive one you can. He was a great customer <laughs> and, and just, you know, enjoy it because it's such a great bike. And he said to me one time, and this is the quote I want to leave you with. If I had known about titanium bikes or if I'd known how good titanium bikes were 10 years ago, I wouldn't have bought two carbon bikes. He at home had two carbon bikes that he'd had over the last sort of 10 years. And he regretted buying both those bikes now we had a titanium bike and I regret buying my carbon bike now because I have a titanium bike but there's one reason I don't there's one reason I'm very happy I started riding aluminium I'm very happy that I've got a steel bike and I'm very happy I've got a I had a carbon bike which I no longer have and that I've tried many customer carbon bikes I'm very happy about it and the reason I'm happy about it what a beautiful butterfly Wow purple and black very nice and the reason I'm so happy about it is because I got to try those other bikes and I got to find out firsthand how much better these titanium bikes are if I'd have never had that bad experience with that carbon bike it wouldn't make riding this one so sweet there's a little bitterness there there is a little bitterness because of the money I lost and it would have been better if I'd have just gone straight ahead and bought one of these but I made that mistake and he made that mistake, so you don't have to. So if you're riding right now an aluminium bike, and you're thinking of upgrading to carbon, or any other kind of bike, and you're thinking of upgrading to carbon, or you've just had your first carbon bike, or you've always ridden carbon bikes, 
or you've always ridden aluminium bikes or steel bikes, the next bike you should try is a tie bike. I can't recommend Lightspeed highly enough. I honestly think they're the best value for money and best technology available out there. Um, for titanium bikes, they're lighter, they're more technologically advanced, and they're, like I say, better value for money than a lot of bikes out there on the market. I couldn't recommend one enough, whether you're looking for um, a mountain bike, a gravel bike, a road bike, whatever you're looking for, check them out. They're so that's all I can say, try a titanium bike. This is a great brand to start with, just try it. You will not be disappointed. So, there you go, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and uh, as always, stay safe.